So last data set to raster is our tool that I searched on, as you saw. And my input is the last data set. My output is going to be book cliffs underscore raster. And my value field I'm going to make as elevation, taking a look at some of the choices there. I'm good with all of those things. I'm going to get, go ahead and select run at the bottom. So now I'm running that last data set to raster command. It's a tool. It's a geoprocessing tool inside ArcGIS Pro. Once done, now I've got a raster data set for my last file. I can go ahead and go to last filters now and select ground. I can also go to last filters and select first return. What does this mean? This means I'm going to get what the ground surface is and also the first return. In my case, the first return is really going to be from the vegetation. So I'm going to get a vegetation surface, if you will. And now what I'm going to do is convert last data set to raster. And I'm going to make the output book cliffs ground. So now that I've filtered it to ground, I'm going to convert last data set to raster and run that, taking the defaults here. Now I've got a ground surface. Should be bare earth. Now if I select first return, and now with the geoprocessing tool last data set to raster, I'm going to call that output first return. Now I'm going to have a raster of the first return. In my case, it's the tops of the vegetation, pinions and junipers in this case, especially on the northeast facing slopes. In your case, it might be buildings. It could be something else that's giving you the first return. But now my objective here is to compare the first return from the ground. Mm. So I can look at the values in there in each one, the first return and the ground. Super. Now let's use the raster calculator to get the difference between the first return and the ground. So here's the first return and the ground showing up in my choices. I'm going to take the first return minus the ground, both of them being rasters. My output raster is going to be named book cliffs because that's the area of interest for me. That's my study area, the book cliffs. And I'm going to call that vegetation height because that's really what it is in my case. The first return is the tops of the vegetation, and the ground is the ground surface without the vegetation. So subtracting the two is going to give me basically the vegetation height. should be basically zero on the southwest facing Mancos shale slopes. They have no vegetation, as you saw in that photograph that I took on the ground. And I'm going to change the colors so that I can visualize this perhaps a bit better. Now I'm going to change the symbology to classified, natural breaks. Is that giving me anything better? In some ways it does, because now I can see that I do have a higher vegetation height for the northeast facing slopes, which was my objective to show. The northeast facing slopes and the northeast part of this image is uh, the pinions and junipers. The southwest facing slopes are truly just the Manco Shale, so there's no vegetation whatsoever on those slopes. And that gives me exactly what I was hoping to see. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and change the base map to a satellite image so I can see the satellite image of that area. Now you can see the pinions and junipers on the northeast side of the study area and the bare earth Manco Shale on the southwest side of the image. Excellent. And of course I could make this semi-transparent and look at the data with the satellite image below it as well. Take a look at some of the metadata here. All right, now let's make a hill shade out of our ground raster. We're going to take the defaults for the azimuth, which is from the northwest. 
the altitude 45 degrees above the horizon, and we'll call that hill SH for hill shade. We're going to run at the bottom there, and there's our hill shade. Zoom out a bit. Now we've got a very nice looking hill shade there, visualizing the surface.